But most of the movie is fiction. Um, there are there are elements that are that did occur things similar to things that happened in my real life, but as a whole, the movie is fiction. All right, who wants to go first? Who's got it? Okay. <laughs> How do you find that balance between like the really heavy emotionally packed moments and the parts of just straight comedy like when you're writing it? Do you ever think that you're giving too much or too little of one or the other? Is this going to be hard? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, well, um, I mean, the main thing is, is really, you know, what, what, I, what I learned in, in writing the script was to have a, a baseline that's rooted in you know, so that it's, I mean, the first draft I wrote was actually was broader than this, it was funnier. I was, I was working really hard to go for the jokes, and I ended up having to peel back the humor a little bit and just focus more on just grounding it and making sure that it felt hard at the time. So even when we're playing hard for a joke, you know, Seth's character, Kyle, I mean, he can do things that are outlandish and say things that might seem absurd, they're they're true to his they're inherently true to his character. Okay? Basically, what, what I focus on in the script is just never throwing a character out of the box. Never make a joke of a character, expense of a character. And I mean, I think it was important to make sure that it always felt true to that person. And that that and just making sure that it and also with the drama, making sure it, it never felt like a moment that wouldn't happen in real life. A conversation. So for me, the dialogue always, I always had to ask the question, would I have this conversation? Do I know who that And that, that's really what I'm doing. Making sure that that, you know, I was following that, you know, maintaining that balance of comedy. Billy. Yeah. Can you, can you talk about your, uh, a little more about the process from rough draft to whether it's that script got sold or it's that script that got sold to the script that a lot of people had? How many drafts do you do with that? Okay. Uh, yeah. So the process of script evolution. The evolution of it. It started as an hour. Well, I mean, it started as an idea that was in my head for about a year and a half. <coughs> they didn't actually start writing it until um, yeah, it was about a year and a half after I had my surgery. That was my surgery. Prior to that, it was just this idea that was in my head, and I would just obsess over it. And I would just tell people about it a lot. And, you know, I reached the point where I remember my ex. It was, it was my ex broke. It was like 2006, and she was like, you have to fucking shut up. You have to wait. You have to start writing this movie. I can't hear you talk about it anymore. And she was like, I'm not going to write it. You have to. So I sat down, and I started writing now, and it took me, um, I don't know, it took, you know, probably six months. For, I was working on TV shows at the time, so I would, at night I would work on the outline. Then I showed it to Seth and Evan, produced it. They gave me notes. Then I did another revision on I did a revision on the outline. Then they signed off on it, and I went and I went away and I wrote the draft. And I was working, I was working TV at the time, so I was writing it at night. So it took a long, a long time. It probably took me a year to write the first draft. And um, then I gave it to the guys. They gave me notes. And that, I mean, really, up until I had that first draft, there was nothing we could really do. And until you have that draft, you can't really have conversations with people about what the movie is until they actually know what it is. So, um, and the, that was when it really started to collide, and I started really focusing on you know all the characters and the artists. Uh, and because the, the the overall arc of the story of Adam's Adam's journey was pretty much all down in the first draft. It was really sort of honing in all of the characters and really defining them and going deeper and putting up their layers that happened in the subsequent drafts. And I probably wrote probably wrote four, three or four drafts. But within that, over the course of two years, uh, until we shot it, but I would say, um, but we, we hired a, the director who, who shot this is Jonathan Levine, but we hired a different director before him, the Paul Hollow Center. She directed Please Give and Walking and Talking and Friends with Money, and I ended up rewriting the draft for her that was different than this movie, and she left the project, and we hired John, and then I had to, re I had to go back to an old draft and then rewrite it four times again with him. So, you know, I mean, it, it was almost like just kind of 
you know, writing it, tearing it apart, figuring out what works, and figuring out, um, you know, where the best stories are, you know, the best story is, and, and uh, um, but, yeah, so, I would say over the course of four, it took probably took four years to finish writing. <coughs> Rewriting students, I hope you're taking that down. That's, you know, it takes a while to get this good. Yeah. I never thought this movie would ever be. I didn't, I mean, really, I was just writing it for me. And I, I mean, I hoped that it would be made, and I had, I really had fantasies that it would be made, and I would get really excited about it. But, but I, I never really thought about how, um, I don't know, I just, I never really worried about that. I really was just focused on, is this something I'm, you know, a movie I want to see? Is this the story that I want to tell? And, because I lived an experience very close to what Adam, what Adam goes through in the movie, I felt like I could tell the story. I felt like it was okay. And I also had two of my closest friends as acting as my producers, and I felt very protected in that sense. Um, that they they agreed that you know they liked the movie, that uh, they liked the movie, and they have you know good taste, and you know I must be doing something right. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, I ultimately I, I didn't I didn't worry that much, um, and I and if anything, I, I think that um, you know we we didn't really we didn't really talk to show to cancer organizations until after we made the movie. Because we didn't. I mean, for me, I really didn't want to get. I didn't want to think about making this movie and worrying about whether it was going to offend people or how. Um, how cancel organizations, because if we were tiptoeing around making sure that we were being really sensitive to everyone, then, you know, then, then we would just be making a horror movie. And it really needed to feel real, it needed to feel raw, and it needed to feel organic. We have another microphone now. Okay. So, yes. Um, I just want to know, what's like the hardest part of the writing process for you, and what steps do you take to sort of overcome that? Whether that's getting blocked, or you hate outlining, or you hate rewriting, or whatever it is that you, you don't like, how do you kind of push through that and, uh, and make a good product? Well, I, I don't like outlining. I think it's my least favorite part. Because it's, you're writing the abstract, and you're not really living the world of your character. Until, <clears throat> until I'm actually living on the page and I'm spending time with the characters, it, it just feel, it doesn't feel like it's, I, it, I don't feel that close connection. It's, it's once I actually start writing dialogue and I start seeing how the characters live day to day, that's, to me, that's the fun part of when I start, they start talking to me and I start talking to them and watching them talk to each other. That's, that's where like, I, that's where I feel like the movie comes to life. And so my solution to this is that I just write really well. I just wrote for a movie, a movie that I'm writing right now. Actually, a movie that I'm making with the guys I made 50 50 with. Our next movie, the outline for that script is 71 pages long. <laughs> the script is 100 pages long. <laughs> so, um, so that that's my least favorite part. But I also I do get blocked, um, and that's that's a really bad <coughs> really issue. Um, but I find that um, when I do, I'm used to it now. And so um, I just I have to step away. I just have to go a day for two days away from the script, or you know, if I'm if I'm under a, a time crunch, there's a deadline, I'll just go see a movie, or go to the museum, or I'll go, you know, hang out with friends who I find inspiring. You know, I'll just do something to kind of get out of my head. But then suddenly something triggers an idea, and then it opens up, and then I see this whole other element to the movie, this whole other dimension that I didn't even exist, you know what I mean? It's just sometimes, I mean, it's hard. I mean, just as a, as a you know, as writers, you know, you know it's, you're, like, you're an architect. You're, you're building something which doesn't exist. You know, that's really hard. You kind know, of have to give yourself a break sometimes and step away from it. And um, yeah, so that's, blocks, blocks happen, but the outcome is not good. You know? Yeah, no, 
know, I, so I did. I worked in TV for a long time, and I, but I was I was producing more than I was writing. I really only wrote on two shows. Uh, I mostly produced, um, and I never worked on a half hour sitcom. And now I'm I'm writing a half hour sitcom for NBC, and I'm doing this, and or I'm doing another you know movie. Um, and I, I much prefer making films. Um, I'm doing. I don't. I've been, so far, TV has proven it's, it's challenging um, because you are really the the commercial aspect of it really dictates a lot of what the network is going to allow you to do, and they have to. You know, networks have to worry about advertising. They have to worry about you know having you know ad space. You know, Bought. And then they have to, you know, the network has to worry about um, shareholders. And when you go and you make an independent film for $8 million, you know, there's this low mix. And, and, they, and you, there's just more freedom. Um, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm actively trying to figure out a way to not lose my mind on the TV show, but it, it is proving to be more difficult than it was just writing something that. I was writing for me, and that was much more than I just Well, Well, I, I would like you to just spend a minute talking about when you were just about their age as a young producer on the Ali G Show. So, <laughs> tell them what that experience a little bit is like. So, <laughs> is there anything specific, or yeah. just <laughs> what, what it's like going to work, feeling like? This is going to be your last day. Oh, sure, yeah. So yeah, when I was 23, I was a producer on the reality show. I was an associate producer in my first big show. It was like six months out of college, and uh, my job on the show, I was the booker. I convinced people. I don't know if, I don't know if people have seen the reality show, but I was the person who convinced people to come on the show. And I lived in fear. I lived in fear, A, that I would be fit, they would find out, and that the interview would be, that I would do something that would reveal the truth, or that they would find out somehow that this was just one big ruse. And I also worried that I was constantly going to be disappointed. I mean, Sasha Baron Cohen is like the hardest working person in show business. He is just, he will not stop. It's never good. I mean, he's, he's a genius. I learned a tremendous amount working for him. And, um, but he's, it's a really hard job. And you, you know, you're working for him seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and um, you, you know, I worried on a constant, I, every day I left work, I, so I did, every day I left work, I worried that that was my last day of work. And every morning, I showed up to work, I thought, okay, he's gonna bring me into his office, and he's gonna sit me down, and he's gonna tell me about it. I mean, I, I really feared that just because it was such high pressure. So, there's a lot of pressure on TV. It, it's really, the pace is really fast, you have, to, you have to turn scripts over really quickly. You have to get things done really quickly. Which typically, you typically don't have the money that you wish you had. And, um, you know, now I do. I mean, you know, we were, we were chased out of every city we went to. And it was, you know, I mean, I would, I would be up late. You know, I, would, I, would, I, had, I had insomnia, I had ulcers. It was, like, it was a really tough job. And then I, you know, and then I, uh, and then I got cancer. <laughs> I like, I, like, I like to credit Sasha Baron Cohen. 